Today I will show you how I did this really cool Game of Thrones toilet paper edition photo manipulation. So let's start. Hey guys, it's Neymanya and welcome to another really fun photo manipulation tutorial. You already know what we will do today, so stay with me till the end because I will show you a lot of cool tips, tricks and techniques in this episode and just sit back, relax and enjoy the ride. So let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. So guys, this is our photo for today, this really cool castle on a sunny day, beautiful photo, but I want to change it into a night scene with some stars on the sky. And there are so many ways how you can do it. So for example, you can go make a copy of this background by pressing Ctrl or Command J. I just make a copy because if I mess something up, I want to have a backup. Then you can go to filter, camera, and here you can just lower the exposure a bit, open the shadows and lower the temperature towards the blue. And this is really cool starting position. Now you need to change the sky to have everything uh, blend it nicely and you have really cool night scenes. So I will cancel this and I will not go this way because to change the sky you need to make a selection of the castle flag, all these tiny branches on the trees left and right and this can be a painful process especially if you don't like to make selections. So now I will show you one really cool way how I like to change skies using one really cool plugin and it takes just a couple of seconds. So basically what we will do we will go to filter and I will use my Luminar 4, Skyloom Luminar 4 plugin for Photoshop. This can be used as a standalone program or as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom. And I already did two videos about Luminar, so in case you are interested in this software, go and check out my uh, recent review about Luminar 4. It's an awesome software and now it's upgraded to a new version with a lot of cool additions. To it. So I will now go and just quickly run through this sky replacement because I already did a full review of the software. Check it out on the link right there. Alright, so basically here I will go to this palette and I will go to Artificial Intelligence Sky Replacement Tool. And here I will just choose the sky which I want to have instead of the current one. So basically let's choose just the first one for a test. And in a matter of a couple of seconds Luminar will analyze the photo and will just replace the sky make a mask for you that you don't need to do that heavy lifting thing. So as you can see, all the details left and right and the cast on the flag, flag, everything is selected perfectly. And basically this is it. This is all that I need to do to change the sky. I don't need to invest, I don't know, half an hour or 15 minutes or whatever I need to make some perfect selections and change the sky. So we can go and change to any other sky that we like. For example, this one or whatever, but because this is this is supposed to be a night scene, I will go and change maybe to starry night. Or this is cool. Or I can load my custom sky images. I have my night sky that I want to use for this photo. So this is it. And I have some mountains on the back, so we can really easily lower the horizon to lower the sky down. And I really love it. So now we can go to advanced settings and play with some atmospheric haze, maybe like this, maybe brighten the sky a bit. Maybe we can go and change the temperature if we want, but this is pretty good for my taste. And just one bonus tip, guys, if something is messed up, if Luminar didn't do a perfect job, you can always go to edit mask and choose to edit with a brush with a radial mask, gradient mask or luminosity mask, so you can always refine it later. So now what I like to do, I like to change this photo into a night scene here in Luminar. So I will go back to my essentials, go to light. And as I already did in camera, I will lower the exposure, make everything more bluish and a little bit more green tint. Also, I want to open shadows a bit, maybe lower the highlights. And I want to go to the colors and desaturate this because now it's too saturated for my taste for a night scene. So this is cool. We can go and see before and after such a dramatic uh, change in just a matter of a couple of seconds, guys. This is awesome. So before and after, and this is pretty much okay with me. We can go and change something else here. So let me show you one another cool thing. We can go to creative tab and uh, instead of artificial sky replacement, we can go to artificial intelligence augmented sky. So we can add some objects to the sky and it will use the same mask 
that is used to add the sky on the photo. So we can go and add maybe some birds. Let me show you. We can click on place object and move it and it will move it but it will not affect anything that is not sky. So you can put anything on the sky by using this cool tool. Also, we can go, let me show you really quickly. We can add a plane or rainbow. Rainbow is cool, let's see. So this is one, one rainbow. We can add a different kind of rainbow like this, maybe like a Walt Disney um, cartoon with that rainbow about the castle, I don't know. Or we can go and change it to clouds or fireworks. Fireworks is cool, I think. So you can add something like this or change it to, to another one, maybe this one. And you can add some cool fireworks, etc. So it's plenty of cool options. You can I will not just go and show you all of them. You can go and run through this yourself. If you want, you can go and download this uh, software. The, I will I will leave the link down there in the description so you can check it out. And now I want to add some birds here because I like to have birds right there, for example. And this is pretty much okay. I will just press apply and we'll go back to Photoshop and continue editing this cool photo. Right guys, so here we have it. Really nice, cool night scene with some stars on the sky and some birds about the castle. And we basically started from this photo. This is day scene, night scene, day, night. And we made this in a matter of couple of seconds using Luminar 4, really awesome tool. Okay, now what I will do, I will go and add this cute robot that I made in the Cinema 4D. This is the thing that we will skip because I will not show you Uh, 3D tutorials, but you can go online and search for such a great amount of awesome tutorials. Cinema 4D, Blender, Blender is free, so whatever you want, 3D, Studio Max, Maya, whatever. So I will paste it right here and now we'll show you some really cool tricks how you can blend this together with the background to add some grass uh, in the front of the papers, etc, etc, change the color temperature of the model and so on and so forth. Okay, so there are a lot of ways how you can change the temperature of the model and how to blend the model with the background. I have a lot of tutorials on that topic. You can go and choose whatever method you like. I will now use the color balance adjustment layer. I will clip it to affect only robots. So this is robot with a bunch of toilet papers. He made the throne out of it. And this is night scene. Okay, so basically I will go here and I will add a lot of blue tint in mid-tones mid -tones and shadows. So basically let's start with shadows, add a little bit of the blue and a little bit of the cyan and just a little bit maybe of magenta, so something, something like this. And then mid-tones the same, blue, cyan, really cool. And let's see. This is pretty cool. I have this big Octabox right here and it's really hard to nail the colors while making tutorials, but this is pretty decent. There is one really cool technique if you want to nail it perfectly. I have a tutorial on that on the link right there. Go and check it out. It's really awesome thing how to match foreground with the background like really, really perfectly. Okay, so I will stop here. This is pretty cool. Maybe highlights, let's see, just highlights a little bit. Maybe towards the red, just a touch. Something like this seems okay. So before and after, before and after. Okay, now let me show you how we can really nicely blend these two things together. So I will go and make a mask on a robot on that layer and I will use Photoshop legacy brushes, I will go and use grass brush. So there are two, uh, dune grass and grass. I will use both of them, I will use mix of them. So I will first use this one. And whenever you use a grass brush, you need to change some settings. Press F5 and go uncheck the color dynamics and transfer. And now you can play with these and uh, make sure to have black color, 100% opacity and just paint. See, you're basically adding grass or or removing the parts of the robot layer and making impression that the grass is actually going in the front of these 
things. So I'll just randomly add some grass here and there. Oops. Maybe a little bit here. And also I want to add some elements on the shadow to make it more organic. Like it's really here on the grass. And here I need to rotate the brush. So right click, just rotate it like this and I'll just paint, paint here. Actually, I don't like to go on a paper, but something like this. Okay, and because this is brighter, I will use regular soft round brush and paint back with this. Oops, a little bit, maybe 20% opacity. Something like this. This is cool. This is pretty cool. It can be a little bit better, but uh, let's do it. Let's black color. Okay, this is pretty cool. So we added some grass element here. Oh, we missed this part. Let's rotate the brush again like that. Just add, add it right there. Awesome, perfect. Now I will change to another one, to the second brush. So it's right there. And again, I need to go to F5, uncheck the color dynamics and the transfer. And now I can just add See, it's different brushes, you can see, different. So I want to add some variety of these strokes here to make it more organic. This is pretty cool. Maybe this is cool. So you cannot be wrong with this. You just go and play and that's it. Okay. Also, what we can do, we can go to the background right here, add a curse adjustment layer clip it to affect only background but there is nothing below that so it will affect background too now let's invert the mask control or command i and with a regular brush i will just use a regular soft brush i will paint back some darkness to to these parts here because this should be in the shadow as you can see and and here i want to paint some darkness Okay, this doesn't need to be in shadow. So everything that that was painted over and need to be in shadow, just paint like this. So let me show you before and after, really cool. Okay, I like it and uh, this is pretty cool. And this is how you add those small details here, left and right, really cool, really awesome way. And to blend this with the background a little bit better. Right guys, now I will add some scratches to the robot, add a few more details and do a final color grading and we are done with this cool photo. So let's do it. I will go and use this cool texture. I will copy it and paste it back above the robot like that. Actually, I will paste it below the robot right there and clip it to affect only the robot. Control or Command T to make it smaller. I can rotate it like this to make it smaller because I want those scratches to be smaller. So this is pretty cool. And I will put this into soft light blending mode because I don't want them to be so pronounced in overlay. You can see they're more visible. So I want in soft light blending mode and I will go back control or command T right click and I will flip horizontal because I want those lines to go from left to right up. This is cool. Press enter and now I will make a black layer mask by holding alt or option key click on a mask you have a black layer mask this is it and i will use really soft brush 100 opacity actually i will use 40 percent opacity and with white color i will just paint here no this is this is cool maybe 20 percent opacity and slowly add those details more or less when where i want them to be some cool scratches and here in the boots just to make a little bit better impression of this metallic robot so this is cool 
maybe right here, why not? We can add it. Okay, this is this is something that I really like, maybe here. But this is before, this is after. I really like it. Okay, now that we covered that, let's add, let's add some glow to this uh, light right there. So to add a glow, I will go regular procedure. I already did this in so many tutorials. Linear dodge blending mode. Choose a color. I will go with a darker version of this yellow that we sampled, something like this, and maybe a little bit more like towards the orange. And I will use, let's zoom this a bit. I will use 20% opacity, really soft brush, 0% hardness, and put this, I don't know what happened, put this into linear dodge blending mode. Okay, and now just add few clicks here, then create a new layer new layer again to linear dodge blending mode make a little bit brighter like that add it a little bit more add another layer again into linear dodge blending mode and i'll choose really bright to add just inside here i don't know just inside here that's cool so let me show you before and after I really like it so we can play with this even more add another one and maybe just go like that and do like like this okay and you can make however you want uh, this glow to be I will group this control or command G and name it glow and uh, this is basically it now I will Merge everything together with Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac onto new layer, and I will go out of filter, camera, and I will do a color grading here because I love it. I will go and add a contrast a bit, open the shadows a bit, add a clarity, add a bit of texture, lower the saturation, add a bit of vibrance. Then I will go and add this vignetting. Okay, and I can change some colors here, just a touch like this. And then I can go to split toning and add a little bit bluish to the shadows, but just shadows like that. This is pretty cool. Also, I can go right here to the radial filter and brighten this part a little bit, just, just a little bit. Like that. And also I can go and add the gradient gradial filter right here to add a little bit more light to the left side where the moonlight is hitting this scene. Okay, and let me see. This is before and after. I really like it. Before and after. And let's add just a touch to the highlights, something like this. And also I can sharpen it a little bit. I'm holding now Alt or Option key to see what I will sharpen. Everything that is white will be affected. So something like this. And let me see, maybe a little bit more contrast and a little bit open the shadows and I will press OK. And here we have it. This is before, this is after, really cute robot, really cute, cute scene. I really like it. And this is how you can make something like this possible to blend foreground and background together and using these cool tips to change the sky to add some elements on the sky using Luminar 4. I love to use uh, use it as a plugin for Photoshop because it's really fast to switch between Luminar and Photoshop and also the grass brush how you can blend uh, this thrown with grass to, to have that better blending impression like it's really sitting there on the grass and this is basically it. You can also add some kind of dodging and burning here to emphasize some elements a little bit more, etc. Spend a little bit more time when you're doing your photos. So again, I always like to say, spend a little bit more time, invest time for some small details. Read guys, so this basically it for today. I really hope that you like this episode and that you learn a lot of interesting and useful tips, tricks and techniques from this one. Now it's up to you to practice on your own images and have fun with them. Just remember, practice makes it perfect. So just practice, practice, practice. That's the only way to get better. And now for all you guys who stand with me here till the end, I will show you another cool trip 
trip tip for this photo so let's go back and let's hide this layer and I will go back to my background and just make a copy of it just in case we mess something up you know the drill control or command J to make a copy then we will go to filter let's go to blur gallery and go to tilt shift and now I want to blur the background to make impression that is out of focus so to make this shown with the robot stand out a little bit more so here I will go with this all the way down like that and this point here is where the focus is 100% nailed so from this point all the way to this point it will be gradually defocused and from this point on it will be the same so this is it we can maybe go to 20 or so depends on the image so maybe a little bit like that I will press OK and this is really cool just a few moments for Photoshop to do it now we can go back merge everything together shift Control alt E or shift command option E on a Mac filter camera and okay and here we have it again this is before this is after I really like when the castle is blurred a little bit when it's out of focus because then this guy with the throne is standing out even more so guys this is final it for today if you like this episode if you appreciate this content just press the like button share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe in case you're not already and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes also if you want to support me and make this channel even bigger and better you can do that by visiting my Patreon page and of course you will get some things in return like this PSD file and other PSD files from my tutorials. So have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun tutorial. Bye bye.